Hi there, and welcome to the question of the month. Today, we are getting into part two of the sex topic. I know you're excited to get into it, as am I. Now let's get into it. So today is the day that we have been all anxiously anticipating. Today is the day that we are going to be talking about part two yep. of the sex talk. Yes. And today we have a most special panel here. Yep. We have Pastor Easton right here. Nice to meet you guys. We have Pastor Nana. Always a pleasure. We have Pastor CJ. Hello everybody. And we have our brother Stephen Ackley here. Thank you for having me again. We are just so excited to talk about this and let's just get right into it. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Gentlemen. Biblically, how does a relationship progress from the beginning to marriage? It's a good question. Um, I'll take this one, if that's okay. Um, so we have to first look at the biblical foundation of how God put it together. Notice that every time Jesus will refer to the beginning, divorce, it was not so in the beginning. Everything he pointed, it was it not so or was it so in the beginning? So if you look at the beginning in Genesis, he starts, he starts with Adam literally in the garden by himself. And he tells him to, commands him to tent the garden, yeah. right? Like take care of it, expand it, multiply, right? And so he finds that Adam is alone. He comes to a stage in this sort of illustrious career or calling where he's literally alone. And God himself says it's not good for man to be alone. Yeah. So then he brings key, a helpmate. Somebody who will assist him in the very assignment he's been asked to do, right? So you also start with somebody that you may consider that can assist you, right? Mm -hmm. With the assignment God has called you to do, yeah. right? So when you get to that person and you say, maybe, you know, maybe you were ushering together. It has to be a Christian. It has to be a Christian. It has to be a Christian. Yeah, good. There is no exception, right? It has to be exactly. born again. Yeah, we have to make it clear. Yeah. Because if we don't make it clear, people will say, yeah, it can be somebody who is a businessman and a, a business person. And, and then all of a sudden, you're not born again. And then you, you marry them and you're... Unequally. Yeah, and you're struggling. You're struggling and you're married. You're coming to church. You're carrying the only the spiritual way. You're the only one to see them from the family. It, it becomes a real mess real quick. As pastors, yeah. we've seen it. We have, we have known it. Anyway, so he then gives Adam the instructions, basically now. So he marries them. So Eve comes in the picture after God says you should not be alone. And then God himself marries them. From there, that's where you see, the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife. Yeah. Right. Then the children came. I know it's, it's interesting because society, we try to brush it off saying, oh, everybody sleeps around. Oh, everybody, you know, different people have different kids. It depends on their story. That's not how it was so. We're not here shaming anybody, but we're telling you what is the right way that blesses God. That, I heard somebody use this phrase, where you want your situation for God to breathe on that situation. Right. Like, is God going to breathe on that situation mm -hmm. that you have engaged in? And so that's the biblical structure that we follow. In modern era, in terms of how it can translate, um, we can come in, come in any time. Yeah. Um, in the modern era, um, I, my wife was, was in another branch of our church. Uh, we met at a leaders conference. And then from there, we grew a friendship. And then a couple of months later, as we were getting to know each other through the courtship, our pastors knew from the get-go what was happening. So they were able to guide us. And then solid Christian leaders were also in um, lockstep with us as we were trying to figure out if this is truly where we want to go with it or not, or if this God ordained. Yeah. And so when we did and finally figured that out, we then got married or then got engaged and then got married and so forth. So similar to what Adam and Eve um, um, took the path. That's the same way God wants us to resemble that same kind of outline that he gave Adam and Eve. So the, uh, the union can honor and glorify God in all that we do, even on the modern standpoint. God has to breathe on it. I think so. another point is that I think within marriage, what's important to understand that both couples are still growing in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And as people grow, their interests change or they themselves uh, change people's love languages change all the time um, so I think the progression is understanding that there's still progress within the marriage you're not going to a marriage complete you're understanding that Christ is the one who completes you yeah. and he brings you to that point of completion right so um, you're progressing within marriage and you have to understand that your partner's interests or uh, love language changes so 
um, being open to that as well, I think is important to understand. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I can, okay. Um, one thing I just wanted to add was, uh, I think underlying your person, as a guy, you're underlying, in the back of your mind, the purpose of the pursuit should be the f what is the function of the marriage? Like, how is my marriage, what is my purpose? And how does she line up with that? Um, because my understanding of, like, for example, okay, when the Bible talks about, it says in the first chapter of Genesis that he created, he, he created man, male, and female. <laughs> That's how he created them. Mm -hmm. One way to understand the word created, I think the scripture word there is bara. It doesn't always necessarily mean like he materially created something. Yes, it can mean that. And it does mean that at times. But for example, create in me a clean heart. Mm. That's what it says in the Bible and Psalms. That doesn't mean, he, that doesn't mean he, he's materially creating something out of nothing. It means he's assigning a purpose to, right. to something. He's assigning a purpose to the heart, like, let the heart be now clean. The heart is already there, and it's not clean. Now function as a clean heart, mm. right? So he's also saying male and female, there's a function to you, right? Like, you have to operate in a certain way, the man and the woman, right? And Adam, of course, says this is now born in my bone, flesh in my flesh. You know, Adam had a function, right, in the garden. Mm -hmm. And Eve was the one, like Pastor Nana was saying, the help, the help meet or the help mate who is becoming part of that one function, right? They together do the one function God, God gave to Adam, mm -hmm. right? And so I think underlying your whole pursuit of a woman, yeah, there's the friendship stuff, the, do you click, keep, you know, loving her, you know, the attraction, all that stuff's important, but it's not primary. I think the primary is what is my function in this world as a, mm -hmm. as a, as a person? And how does she, how is she going to, how does she line up with that function? Because if she doesn't, uh, it's, when you go, I guess at the, end of the, at the end of your life, when God judges your life, like you have to answer for everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your decisions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think pursuing that whole relationship and going through all those steps, there has to be that underlying main, main purpose of pursuing the woman, which is how is she going to function with? Correct. Like, and I, and this is one question, so we're, we're really expanding this one, but yeah, yeah. it's a good one. Good. Yeah, it's yeah, a really it's good absolutely. one, right? Yeah. Because he, he, he rose a point that like, I need to address, which is like, I can use personal experience. I'm a pastor of nature. Yeah. I'm busy. Like, he's a pastor. He's a pastor. We're busy. Our life is not the normal nine to five situation. Yeah, that's for sure. Right? We, we, I leave work because I work as well, and I go and visit home. And still do ministry. If you don't have a wife that understands that, and even like uses that opportunity to, of course, you have to still use wisdom and make sure and you balance, spend yeah. quality time and, and and do that. But I'm just talking generally; it's not a normal life, right? And so you go and visit homes, and if you have a wife that doesn't understand that the purpose before she came in, then she will fight with you all the time yeah. about why do you have to visit them? Why do you have to do this? Why can't why you, stay home? Why can't you just yeah, stay home? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you have somebody who walked into, before you got into the actual tying a nod before the altar, if you both understood and agreed with like God himself ministering to both of you individually, you will be able to be able to live that kind of purpose, like he's saying, as one. Mm -hmm. right. Versus only one is doing it and the other one is fighting. Yeah. Which makes it a challenge, right? So he's right, yeah. So one's pulling and the other's pushing. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow, that was uh, a really good explanation just, yeah. <laughs> just to that. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that's going to really help touch a lot of people with that explanation. So I'm going to go into kind of a more modern uh, viewpoint, especially with the terminology that's being used. For a Christian, like a born-again Christian, I might add, can they have a boyfriend or girlfriend when they're going through the process like can it be classified as such i think the end goal has to be courtship to marriage i think it shouldn't be i just want to i think sometimes i guess just based on what's out there people 
yearn for companionship. Mm -hmm. And then loneliness is one of the biggest struggles of, of teens right now. Um, so it's, it's something that people strive for companionship and not even for like, hey, I want to build a life with this person. It's just, I don't want to be lonely. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if it's, if this earlier, basically what I mentioned is you can't look for someone to complete you. Christ is the one who completes you. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for someone to fill that void, you're never going to find that in an individual. That person is to compliment you, but Christ is the one who completes you. So I don't think as Christians, we should look to just test drive or um, look for a companion. It should be the end goal of marriage and spending life with that individual. Yeah. So that's what I would say. Uh, gentlemen, if you want to jump in. Yeah, you've said it all. I have a story that's interesting. So in the French language, like last time we were arguing about what's best in French, but, <laughs> but I will, I will, my wife is, a, is French from Congo. Oui, oui, oui. Uh, oui, oui, oui. <laughs> He's French. And I, I came to find out, maybe it's her, her, the actual Lingala language from Congo, but I don't remember the exact situation. I remember when she had to introduce me to her, her family, mm -hmm. there was not a word to say boyfriend or girlfriend. Mm -hmm. That word was directly fiance. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was strange. Like, it's, like, it's, like they, it's like that, there's no, like that, it's not an, a, a word that they easily transition yeah. like, in common language in their language to use boyfriend and girlfriend. It's usually the person that I'm actually engaged to. That's yeah. even though we were at a certain stage that was not even engaged yet. Like she had to use the phrase "This is my fiance" mm -hmm. because there was no word to kind of fill the gap of a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Yeah. So I, I, I found that interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yeah, I found that interesting. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, I think it's completely a cultural thing, the, having a boyfriend and girlfriend, and in today's culture, having a boyfriend or girlfriend is. It's meaningless, kind of. It's just kind of like a status. Yeah, know. it's it's more so. It's just just to be in a relationship, just sure. to try and experiment, and just to figure out things and figure out yourself. That's and to be honest with you, that's not biblical at all. Yeah, I actually don't think it's there's it's nowhere, it's nowhere in the Bible. It, yeah. yeah, there's nothing like that. I mean, if you're going to be in a relationship, the you're getting to know, there's no real point where like in the French culture that he's talking about or the Congolese culture. There's no word to describe what a boyfriend girlfriend is because it's more so, I think, a this culture thing. Right. I guess there's other cultures that have it too, of course, but it's more so. The only thing that really matters is the marriage thing, like yeah. going towards marriage. In fact, many cultures arrange it, right? Family is involved in doing it. You know, family is the one they talk and talk, and you don't have a lot of say in it. Of course, you have a little bit of a say, but it's organized that way. You know, would that person be your boyfriend girlfriend? I guess if your parents are the ones talking about it right so i think boyfriend girlfriend is it's not necessary it's a moot term almost yeah i personally think it's just not necessary to have one um i see your pastor said get, get a degree first and then, <laughs> and then put some sense in your head yeah <laughs> that's what he said. he said he said get a degree first and then after you can start um trying to find someone so, to settle down with yeah so am i right to think that there could be courtship but with the purpose of getting married right yeah, yeah. that's what he said yeah yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah okay um thank you very much i have a question here Go for it. um that is for people who are married sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so Amen. the question is are men okay with a woman not participating actively during sex should men be okay should men, should be, men okay. be okay okay yeah um yeah, i don't know if you want me to go first or you go <laughs> no you go ahead I, I, feel, I feel like um our opinion would be biased because we're giving from the point of view as as um as us mm -hmm. as a uh, man and, and our own i guess our own sex lives and what we would not be okay with um but i think in general we can't really speak for the men, but, <laughs> but I think um, I think it's important to understand that sex is amazing. You know, and I think women should understand that it's very amazing for the men as well. You know, and participation is something that you know helps enhance that experience. Um, I, we understand that women; it's also an emotional factor as well. They, 
it's in their head first and then their body reflects but men it's in their body and then <laughs> their head is next that's so, if their head comes up <laughs> <laughs> so um, i think it's important to understand that sometimes as women the the sacrifice would be to understand your husband's side of it in terms of sex and this next questions i'm about to question i'm about to ask Go for it. was um asked by a member that want to know about this should husbands be okay with their wives not participating actively during sex i think that's a great uh question and there's a scripture we can uh, base our answer on if you want to turn to it it's a uh first corinthians 7 verse 3 if you want to read it aloud it says let the husband render to his wife the affection do her and likewise also the wife to her husband so it gives us an answer in regards to the affection portion that needs to be involved within a sexual action between husband and wife um, i think it's important to understand that um, though we may not vocalize that we need that affection um, as men it's something that it should be included within that sexual um, experience because it is as much as it's um about the the post outcome of the sex for men sometimes it's also about that experience of being intimate because you're being intimate with your individual you're joining as one and um it's, it's also important to understand just that factor of that affection needs to be included you know so no, you, you kind of work yeah. things out as as um as you and your spouse work things out and and figure out what works for the both of you guys mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah i know that's that's well said um i think what i would add is like it's just in anything that god has called you to whether it be ministry, whichever capacity you serve in, uh, whether it's in your career, um, whether it's in the family that you have. Uh, we, one of the things we always say is we want to glorify God, and part of glorifying God is creativity. Part of glorifying God is kind of making things always um, afresh, yeah. always just new, new in a way where it's exciting again. Yeah. So I think part of that is in, in your intimacy with your wife as a man. Um, both the, one, the wife to the husband and the husband to the wife, it is due to you, according to the scripture, to make things appropriate but spicy. Yeah. Okay, we get real, right? It's due to you and her to make it very exciting. So you both have the responsibility to not keep it a base and boring. Yeah. Right. Right. You gotta get excited. I mean, uh, I, I don't want to get into too much details, but. Um, you can, you can, one preacher once says, once you are married, it can go from the bedroom to the kitchen. And, <laughs> and it, it's, it's not an issue yeah. because you're married, yes. but you keep it going. Try um, things that are healthy, but, but keeps it fresh. It keeps things, uh, uh, the fire going, the flame yeah. going within yeah. your intimate life. Of course, things that are appropriate, that doesn't attach itself to the past. Yeah. And I think we'll tackle that later, but mm -hmm. things like something that would really naturally, as you learn yeah. in each other's body, it will come forward. But you're always intentional about trying to keep that a freshness within your intimacy. Yeah. Okay. I think you just you work things together as a married couple. We understand as a married couple, each individual has a very busy life sometimes. So sometimes the guy may be planning and thinking about this all day and the woman comes home and she's tired. Yeah. So the guy also has to be understand that she just finished her whole work shift mm -hmm. and she may not have the same enthusiasm as he's been prepared for in his mind. Like, you're you say, he's saying something solid right now. He's really saying something solid right now. <laughs> yeah. Because every married person understands what he's yeah. saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every you. married person understands what he's saying. One thing I've, I've gotten advice about that years ago, um, and it was such good advice. I said, hey, if you expect your wife to be ready for you for intimacy when you just get there or after you shower and you There's eat, no way. it's not possible. But there is a trick that you can try, which is text her from the morning. I said, hey, baby. Husband, I, you're giving you tips right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, you're getting tips <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, hey, good baby, ones. <laughs> you're so awesome. When I saw you this morning, you were just so beautiful. Yeah. Please. How's your work? Revealing all our tricks now. Yeah, so I'm just giving some. I have, I have more. <laughs> I have more. I have more. <laughs> right? Like, hey, baby, like, what's, you good? You look so beautiful this morning. Yeah. You all right? Um, how's work? How's home? Um, everything good? Just so you know, you know, um, um, what do you need? You need any lunch? I mean, because when you get, you're already creating, they, call, they talk, they talk yeah. about foreplay. Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's literally part that, of it. But that means in the head, it's right? It's in their head. He said it's in their head. Yeah. So it's in their head. So you 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 create that, you stimulate that desire yeah. in yeah. advance. They need yeah. time. We are quick. Yeah, we're good. They need time. Microwave, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sometimes women, you know, they take some time. Exactly. So they need time. So by the time you get home, they're all so wild. My husband was checking yeah. in on me. Yeah. My husband really appreciated me. So you, before you even blink, <laughs> she all over you. <laughs> Dr. Locker said, jumping your bones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right? So, so the prep is huge. And the prep starts from the beginning, the morning. Versus you coming home and you're like, oh my goodness, I need it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but how about yeah. when it's, uh, sorry, how about when you've had a rough day as well and maybe to make the day better, you want to be intimate. So you don't have the energy to do those kind of things. Are you, been, point. Are you saying to the wife? The, the husband or the no, like you, yeah. after having a long rough day? Like for, you, uh, for you, the husband, for him not, uh, yeah, has to work towards it. Yeah. Oh, I think like you, you just have to be okay with like just whatever you get at that point. You yeah. Of okay. Like, like you know the spiciest. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But I also say to wives, it, you know, as the scripture says, like I would, I would encourage any wife to understand that the man might have had a busy day. Yeah. And maybe a rough day. Yeah. And you should communicate with your wife that. But the tip to the wife would be, I would say, is. Hey, it helps relax the man, especially if you know he's had a difficult day. Yeah. So whatever helps relax the woman, you do as the husband. Whatever helps relax the man after a very tough day, you would know your man best, your husband best. So what? Try to, try to um, be active towards that, that specific situation. Yeah. yeah. One last thing I would add, um, especially for those of us who have spouses who watch kids, Mm -hmm. uh, instead of working where they spend a lot of time with the children mm -hmm. when you're looking to initiate sex they themselves don't feel the sexiest correct so they want to feel sexy yeah you know mm -hmm. what i mean so yeah. it's our responsibility to help them feel sexy even though we see them as sexy and we tell them that they're sexy mm -hmm. um, we want to help them feel sexy yeah. in that moment Being so that confidence. us doing our yeah that your, your words are everything, everything as a husband you know? like it's everything talk like solomon yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> said bam girl yeah <laughs> you fine yeah, her breath can man, be man, take man. notes, take notes. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are some very good hints for married men. Yeah. And for future married men. And That's for right. future married men. Mm -hmm. I, I took good notes of those. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, you know what, gentlemen? That was like, that was some fire advice right there. So thank you, especially as a future, soon to be married man, you know, sort of thing. Um, to them. That, that really uh, clarifies a lot of yeah. things. So. I would also like to ask for somebody who's like working through the process mm -hmm. towards getting married and that, how do you handle the desire of having sex before marriage? Oh, we got to get us to Pastor CJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, he's the one who's going through right now. Yeah. Um, they're far away from the person. <laughs> <laughs> Take away that temptation. <laughs> That's the easy way to like it. Yeah. You're far away from the person. That way, whenever, you're, whenever you have desires, you physically can't act on it. Um, I would say this is why you can't have a relationship in secret. Yeah. Uh, so you can be accountable to people. And accountability only works as far as you let it work. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You have to be intentional about your actions. Some people, it's, this is not a one size fits all question. Because mm. some people um, have a past. Mm. Mm. Right? They have a past. And so, because of your past, you have to be more guarded. Some yeah. people are far in their spirituality, some of them are not far. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? If you're a babe in the faith, you're, much, you're a more carnal person just naturally you're more, you're more fleshly yeah so you you're gonna have to go to extremes um you know in order to just be around the person to get to know them without temp without tempting yourself yeah mm -hmm. you know um you know you know how women nowadays and i think in modern culture a lot of them say they can dress how they like yeah. Yeah. and it's like a woman's yeah. right thing yeah uh, exactly. yeah okay but <laughs> just understand in the, in the context of this, 
when you are courting somebody, consider the guy that likes you, mm -hmm. yeah. right? The man that's courting you, that likes you, just, if he's weak, then don't make it harder for Especially him. Especially in that area, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah you know. Wear, wear a sweater or something. That's for a Chris So dress <laughs> appropriate. Yeah, modesty. 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 Yeah, your yeah, pants, that's the biggest thing. Let your pants yeah. be modest. Or that's your, a whole other conversation. Or your, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, your, or your skirt or whatever. I think, what's it called? Uh, nowadays, sundress is popular. Yeah. You may not want to wear that if you have, if you're blessed. <laughs> yeah. Curvaceous. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, I'd say, oh, don't underestimate the power of the Word of God. Um, you need to study your Word of God, the Word of God. You need to study it and just let the words soak up into your heart. It just makes you stronger. Yeah. Right. As a Christian, to resist temptation, um, that you cannot underestimate that. Um, fasting and prayer as well, that, sh that should be a regular part of your life. Just being a spiritual person in general yeah. mm -hmm. makes you better at resisting temptation resisting, yeah. right. right so you need to be working on your christianity as a as a whole as a general mm -hmm. in, in general so just grow as a christian in general be i remember hearing from Derek prince he was saying a christian that understands sorry a christian just as a christian is powerless without prayer just as much as a christian powerless without fasting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right Ballot like point. a christian that knows that they ought to pray and doesn't pray um, is as powerless as a Christian who knows to fast and doesn't fast. fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Fasting is actually important because important. Um, uh, it, it moves you more to prayer and to intimacy. You know, like I can test back to the fact where it's like there's times where it's time for me to eat, but I want to retreat in prayer to God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to spend that time because I'm seeking Him. I need, I need, I need God. Yes. You know, um, and so. Like, like I was saying, um, <laughs> you want to be practicing those things. Right. You want to be practicing those things. Uh, I think that will really help you a lot. So, in conclusion, uh, just grow spiritually. Be accountable. Um, know your weaknesses. If you can, flee from those weaknesses. Eliminate yeah. the temptation. Yeah. 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 Where Potentially possible. Be open about your weaknesses, too. Yeah. Not, not necessarily to the person who you're courting. Oh, okay. In a way, you can. But not all, like some of it can yeah. really cause problems if you, you should definitely be open to someone you can be accountable to, yeah. but not everything to the person you are going to yeah. be courting, mm -hmm. because they may be as weak as that. Yeah. And some people, when they find that out, it's like it's a, a way a weakness in. weakness party. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a weakness party, right? Yeah. But a, he said the word, so I just want to read this uh, verse. Psalms 119 verse 11 says, your word I have hidden in my heart yeah. that I might not and sin against, against you. you. Yeah. That's what came to me when you were speaking. Yes. Your yes. word that I've hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yes. Yeah. Wow, powerful, powerful. Oh, sorry, the last thing I'll say is Jesus is the best example of someone who was single. Uh, <laughs> yeah, single. Yeah, well. But well, when, he's going, when he's going through temptation, yeah. he literally had to pray, right? In yeah. his finest hour, right? When, um, uh, when he was about to die and he was praying to the Father, let this cup pass from me if it's not your will. He started sweating, drops of blood. Right. So he was an intense moment for him i don't think anyone has ever been so tempted by a woman they begin to sweat blood right i don't think it's been that deep for anybody nah, that's mm. not that deep. right <laughs> so jesus in that moment he was praying to the father and an angel came to comfort him right so i think there's comfort in the fact of knowing god is not, god won't allow you to be tempted past what you're able yeah you know and if it really is past what you're able an angel from heaven will come down. <laughs> Amen. 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 No, 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 don't mean you're going to put yourself in a position yeah. where the girl's yeah. half naked and you're saying, you will not let me yeah. go beyond what I'm, I can take. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, don't put yourself, yourself in a position. Yes. 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 Yeah. Well, that's what's thank you. Right there for you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have another question again go for it. from um, another member. Is it okay for a man, for a for a husband mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or a wife to use sex as a reward or a punishment in marriage when one or the other is begging for them to engage? And the simple answer is no. But I okay. think it needs more elaboration, which I think 
one of these two gentlemen can. Well, you can't answer it. Yeah. So <laughs> one can, one can speak on the reward parts, yeah. another can speak on the punishment parts, or both together. Yeah, from a biblical standpoint, I guess you can. Be yes. yes. Um. You know is the answer, but why? Um, the reason is that the Bible literally says your body is not your own. Yeah. Even when you're like, like marriage is, in, is a reflection of your relationship with um, God. Like God literally, like our relationship with God resembles the idea of marriage, mm -hmm. right? And the Bible literally brings clarification when it says that once you give your life to Christ, you literally are not your own. You don't belong, like whatever you have now has everything from the body to every possession you own mm -hmm. is his, right? The same thing with a marriage, the Bible also talks about how the body does not belong to you. That's why it literally says in the same passage that we read in 1 Corinthians 7, 3, that give due to this person, the husband, or to the wife, yeah. what is due to them, yeah. right? But it doesn't mean that you can, um, excuse my language, piss them off and then expect to get sex. To get sex. Because the Bible says Because <laughs> the Bible says that. that's a, That's what the modern era would call abuse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Because you're not, you're not overtaking, you're overstepping your grounds because mm -hmm. um, that's what they call the happy center, the woman's, um, the pleasure point pieces yeah. that you would want to get access to. That you don't, you don't upset a person and then expect, give me, give it to me anyways. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, part of it is to create an atmosphere, as we said. Yeah. For that to be an exciting or at least a doable part for your spouse, mm -hmm. yeah. versus you just causing problems and then you expect. I don't care. The Bible says I'm your husband. I yeah. own your body. So let me yeah. give it to me now. That's rape. That's rape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's rape. Right. And then the punishment side. I don't know if you wanna. Um, that was the punishment side. No, did I just talk about the punishment? I think you spoke about the punishment side. Okay, let me just add to it then. So the you can the, also use I the reward. About the yeah. reward. Yeah, okay, so the reward is the word reward is a funny word to use because to or some type of compensation. Or something. I was going to ask about that. Yeah, because so, like I mean, when I think about reward, it's like I did something. It's like, it's like, like, it's like you 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 showed your wife so much love, and she's like, oh, thank you. She's so happy. And then you guys get intimate. And that's and, natural. And that's like a reward. That's more yeah, natural. Yeah, and, that, and that's not bad. As a reward. It's yeah. her showing her way of appreciation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not more so you classify it. If you classify it, hey, this is a reward for you. And it's like, hey, I do this, this, and that, and then I get sex. So it's the, you'll, you'll only follow those type of steps versus there's many ways to be intimate with your wife, you know? So I don't think it's just more so focusing on the category or title as a reward. It's just understanding that maybe that's how your wife shows appreciation mm -hmm. for you cleaning the house when it was her chore to do mm -hmm. or you, you cooking when she wanted to cook mm -hmm. when you knew that she needed a break because she had a long day mm -hmm. you know so something like that um i think you just have to remember that you know that's different ways to show appreciation but don't cl categorize it as a reward based wants. system it's not like Optimum points. Okay. <laughs> I have a lot of those points. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I need to redeem them. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> You're not collecting yeah. points to redeem sex. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, just think of it that way. Okay. Thank you. So, the next question that I'd like to ask is Would I be allowed to watch movies with sex, to, uh, sex scenes? I think it's a great question. And uh, someone asked me something similar not too long ago. In regards to how they should know or what what criteria they should be looking for when they watch movies and i think in general before you watch a movie it tells you viewers discretion is advised yes. and it says the following movie may contain nudity sexuality so as christians as we know like lust is something that we shouldn't have within our hearts you know mm -hmm. and uh, fleeing worldly youthful lust is something that we should be practicing um so you avoid movies that have those type of context in it if you're watching a movie and obviously that type of scene comes on you can i personally turn it off my wife likes to just fast forward through it if it's a good movie and it's just that one sex scene but i tolerate none of it if i see it <laughs> it's canceled especially like i i love to say it i don't i was gonna say i hate to say it but i love to say it. if it's a gay scene i turn off the movie you know what i mean but um you just have to be a, a a mindful christian in terms of like guarding your heart you know what i mean it's just that that split second can affect your marriage because you can see that sex scene and 
be envious of that sex scene mm-hmm. versus your own mm-hmm. sex scene, mm-hmm. or not really sex scene, but your your sexual intimacy with your own person, with your wife, right? Yeah. So I think it's important to understand that you have to guard your heart because fantasies can be created and yeah. all these things. So it's important. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like there's movies that have come out, lots of movies over the years that have come out about uh, a wife or a husband literally because of their desire for sex are cheating consistently yes. yeah. and the scene itself is horrible like you're saying and i won't tackle that because you tackled it yeah but just the fear after watching that movie of your wife or your husband cheating yeah starts ringing in your head yeah you don't want to create that atmosphere right. or those it thoughts jealousy. it creates jealousy yeah. you wonder hmm you know would this person ever do this to me yeah yeah that was never in your head yeah, who are you texting yeah who are you texting <laughs> what's going yeah. on you know, uh, if they don't trust you and you've, like, and there's a history or there's, then maybe they've been cheated on in the past or whatever it is, it can create um, a huge issue. So you try not to create, like, honor your marriage bed, right? So create, yeah. and do everything to protect and keep sacred that marriage bed. And that includes things that you allow viewership through the lens of your eyes to be seen and your ears to be heard. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so, well, gentlemen, this has been a fantastic discussion. Unfortunately, we've kind of run out of time uh, because we really got into it, but it was great. It was, it was great. Was this, awesome. is, this will really touch uh, our viewers here. So the next time in part three. Yeah, we're stretching it. Oh, yeah, so it'll be, it'll be a really good one. We're going to be uh, discussing whether or not uh, if it's okay if sex toys can be used in marriage as well is it okay in marriage for only one person to be initiating sex all the time? So we will have a surprise, possibly. We may have, we may either invite the ladies to come to join us or there's gonna be an all ladies panel. That's quite exciting. All right, give it over to you. That's very exciting. Okay, so Pastor Nana, could you please pray for our viewers here? Absolutely, let us pray. Father, we just thank you so much that as men, men in the faith who um, love your word, love fellowship, love your church, love your people, and most importantly, love you. Lord, that we have come together to discuss a topic that is, yes, sensitive, but glorifies you in the right stage, in the right means, in the right situation. Anybody that's struggling with any sexual sin, any sexual struggles, any marriage that is struggling period of intimacy, I pray that you breathe your breath into that marriage. You breathe your breath into the person who is struggling to have self-control so that they can wait for the right person that is in the faith to marry and have intimacy with. Lord, I just pray for grace for us men, the ones who are married and the ones who are not yet to be married but soon to be, that your grace will also be with us, that we will continue to glorify your name and be example to others that will come after us. Lord, we glorify your name once again. Be thou glorified as we continue this discussion moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, for our viewers at home, if you do not have a home church to go to, please check out All Nations Full Gospel Church to see if that there is a branch near you. And please contact us. We also have service at 1 p.m. on Eastern Time on Sundays. We really hope to see you there. As well, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel. As well as please also check out our website. Thank you very much and have yourself a blessed day. See ya.